Hospital Report as pride and dignity stopped the New World Order. Welcome to Her Panwo TV and welcome to this. A reply video to Steve Mumbling. Now this is um, actually the first reply video to Steve Mumbling I've done uh, in 2021. Um, I've done quite a few last year, about three or four. I'm going to do some more this year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, now... This is uh, basically, I've, I just felt the need to say a few things to, to some of the material that Steve has been posting on his channel lately. Since the new year, he's done a few videos, not as as long as his usual output, and they're covering other subjects such as um, mysterious plane crashes and things like that, which are not really very mysterious, and um, I don't disagree with him enough to comment on those. However, um, I do want to say a few words about two videos he made um, over the course of... His, this the month that's just gone and the one that's just come along. I'll just find his channel. And I should have checked out his channel. It's the videos. I'll give you the title of the. I'll give you the title of the videos. Um, they are um, Trump to declassify everything plus X Israeli space chief says aliens are here and Happy New Year Rambo. So Happy New Year Ramble. Yeah, <coughs> he's done other things about um, his car engine and the Qantas Flight seventy two, which was a. I don't think it was mysterious, it was just a terrible accident. Um, UFOs and 5G morons. Oh, I'll have to cover that, I'll have to cover that another time. Um, I'm not sure exactly what title I'm going to give this video, actually, because um, Steve goes into several issues over the course of this video, and um, I mean, I'm not sure which one particularly I want to make the kind of headline issue of this particular video. I might just call it... Uh, 2021 because a lot of the, the I think the point he makes in this video is it's basically a new year video and he's just looking forward to the year ahead so I think possibly make it um, making it like the 2021 Steve Mumbling replied to Steve Mumbling 2021 or something like that um, either way there's a lot of interesting stuff on here so um, I shall begin right now and um, we shall continue mm. As always, Steve starts with the copyright and um, like disclaimer on his videos. I don't know why he does that. He does it every time. Like, I'm not going to sue him, am I? Well, <coughs> what do we know about uh, President Trump? Apart from the fact that uh, he's obviously gormless, he's, uh, he's not bright enough to realise he's uh, got to get his pimply backside out of the White House. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Oh, my God, I've been hacked by Professor Brian Cox. I've been hacked. He's hacked me. He's hacked me. No, no, what it is. Um, you know, you know, when I do these reply videos to various people, I, I have like little sound key, um, sound notifications for when I need to um, stop and give you some commentary. It's because I, I review these videos in advance and I, I provide a little bit of commentary, but I, I make little notes as I go along. Whenever you hear a strange sound, it means I've got to stop and I've got to read my notes. So I've got to make a commentary. Um, I remember the last one, it was the Stephen Molly was Phil Mitchell, I remember then. My last one to Steve was actually Penn and Teller having a sweary rant. And this one um, is Professor Brian Cox. I, I found a, a clip of him saying, millions and billions of stars. Ooh. And um, so I decided I think that was appropriate for Steve, because I think he's the kind of bloke who would like the Coxer. I think he's a Coxer type person. So I thought I would choose those. Um... So, um, so, he says, firstly, I want to ask you, Steve, how do you know that President Trump's backside is pimply? Have you been, uh, look, have you been exchanging naked pictures or something like that, you two? Oh, I've always, I always thought you never, you never been a fan of him, but you know what they say about, um, it's, it's like when a girl fancies you, she sometimes is quite not unpleasant to you, you know, it's, I found that at school, um, maybe this is the same thing, Steve really has a crush on President Trump, a little bi-curious little schoolboy infatuation on the great president and he's written to him and they've been exchanging naked pictures and now so Steve must know that Trump's bottom is pimply I've never seen President Trump's bottom I wouldn't know if it's pimply or not I wouldn't particularly want to actually if it's Melania that's fine but Trump no I wouldn't want to see his pimply bottom or otherwise whether it's pimply or not but you obviously do and you have done so that's how you know uh, why? What, where was the risk? How? Does, why shouldn't he get his back, his backside, pimply or otherwise, out of the White House? Well, the reason is because he won. He won the election, so why should he? As it happens, he's not in the White House now. Uh, I've done entire videos about that. Um, 
I've just recently did I did a live stream and I did alt tech exclusive so you can always check those videos out if you're excuse me not familiar with that particular subject so please continue Steve and uh, he's vindictive so uh, he's going to uh, you most not very smart people are very vindictive 30,000 million 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 stars Right, so he's he's vindictive. He's absolutely vindictive. That's the word you're using to describe him. In what way is he vindictive? I mean, he he strikes me as actually a very professional, very calm, and very dignified leader. He has a sense of honour and a sense of fair play that is very rare among statesmen. Um, so I'm not sure. I hope you can explain exactly what you mean. Maybe you put comments on the video I made on the videos because I made a handful of videos now about this particular subject and I have yet to read them in which case maybe you can explain then anyway um, please continue um, now if we go back to look at this this is December the 13th and this is uh, news.com.au Trump says he's pushing to declassify everything before leaving office now this is just Trump being vindictive he wants to piss everybody off by declassifying everything 30,000 million, million, million stars. OK, he wants to piss everyone off by declassifying everything, doesn't he? Well, um, what do you mean by everything? Because the word everything in that news article is in quote marks because that's kind of what was... I don't know, don't know where, whether he said he was going to declassify everything or someone else was, or someone else suggested he was going to declassify everything. But the, the word everything is in quote marks. Now, the question is, when that, it, is the word meant literally? Because... It could be, it's not literally everything. It could mean everything that most people believe in, or something like that. But anyway, um, Steve's going to comment on that now, so let's let's let him fly away. Absolutely everything. So he's going to be declassifying the uh, uh, the Roswell incident. He's going to be telling everybody that uh, ET really is here. They crashed here in 1947. There's some sort of alien liaison has been going on since the 40s. 30,000 million, million, million stars. So you, when you say everything, when he says everything, it's like, um, so literally all the secret things in the world, he's going to declassify. Now that is, that's a long shot, Steve. It's a long shot. I mean, obviously I would like that to happen. I would like, literally, I'd be quite happy to have complete transparency. Obviously, take into account the Data Protection Act and people's privacy and things like that. But as far as factual issues go connected to the state, I would like total transparency. But <clears throat> that is a very, very long a long shot. You realise that it's it's something that... It's a kind of, this kind of structural secrecy cannot be undone overnight. It cannot be overdone in one fell swoop. It's possible it can't even be undone by one man. Especially in a system where, which is specifically designed to stop one man getting too much power. Um, I, as far as Trump being the disclosure president, as you know from my past videos, I did have the highest hopes ever of any president that Trump would be the disclosure president, taking the exact mirror opposite position of Steve Bassett, who thought that he basically wrote Trump off as, as a no good. He completely wrote Trump off as a bad lot. And he, well, tr during the last four years, he's focused his attention on other countries. Um, now that Joe Biden is the supposedly the president, Bassett seems to have he's regained his faith in the United States of America. I personally have not lost faith in the U.S. to be the disclosure nation. I think it's still the most likely nation to be the disclosure nation. I also haven't lost hope in, that Trump might be able to do something to um, remedy the political turmoil in that country. That would unfortunately mean some kind of um, upheaval which would involve Joe Biden being removed from office and possibly some kind of provisional government and eventually maybe even Trump returning to the presidency. That's a big subject which I'll cover in the future, but that's that I think is the best hope for disclosure. If you've read my novels, um, the, the Roswell trilogy, Roswell Rising, Revealed and Redeemed, you'll know that that kind of plot, oddly enough, I almost predict it. Because you'll know that exactly that kind of plot appears in the story. So, uh, so, as it was, we haven't seen disclosure during the last four years, and that's that is a disappointment. But it's not over yet. I'm, I'm not, and it's not inconceivable that Trump still cannot be the disclosure president. 
He's going to declassify the fact that uh, George Bush organised the 9-11 uh, the atrocity. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, George W. Bush couldn't organise Joe Biden's commode. What on earth are you talking about, Steve? Um, the G G George W. Bush, is, was, there's no way he can be the mastermind behind anything. I think what <coughs> would happen if there was some kind of declassification of the truth behind 9-11 would be that it was the, some force within the military-industrial complex decided to pull that off. Bush happened to be the president at the time. He went along with it. Something similar happened, I think, if uh, if Joe Biden is not removed, there's something you'll see something very very similar happening happening again. And um, again, it, obviously Joe Biden's not the one behind it. Even Kamala Harris probably couldn't do it. It's um, something organised from the deep state, and the president's the presidency, the executive expected just to simply parrot the official story. And this is what could be declassified. I well, I I mean, as I said, if you if you dump red pills on people and shove them down their throats, they're going to choke. This is the thing. This it's the kind of the the actual depth and severity of the secrecy we're talking about here is so intense and so it's so convoluted and so deep that probably even I would have trouble accepting the entire truth. I've always said, you know, Steve Bassett portrays disclosure as something wonderful. As you know, if you if you've read my books, I believe that disclosure actually. When it happens, yes, it will be wonderful in a way because we we have to have it in order to progress forward from where we are as, as a species, as a planet. However, it's not going to be very nice. It's going to be extremely unpleasant disclosure. It's going to horrify people, including me. It's going to cause political and economic and social turmoil. And we're going to have a very bumpy period. A, a, there'll be a transitional period into the Illuminati, into the post-Illuminati world that is going to be extremely tumultuous very extremely it's going to be a hard road to tread but we have to tread it i think when it comes to secrecy you mentioned you meant you're going to you're going to mention other secrets in this next few clips which i'm going to play however um you don't mention what's probably the the most what probably be the most shocking secret of all and the most horrible one of all which is what's happened to children when that comes out, I mean, that's going to be the worst one of all to swallow, I think. Um, but anyway, let's carry on. Um, <laughs> and uh, that uh, free energy is real. They've known all there is to know about free energy for decades, and they're keeping it all a secret. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Well, yes, Steve, yes. I've, I've done... How many reply videos have I done to you about that? Uh, correct, exactly. I, I, it didn't. This, the free energy issue is intimately connected with the UFO issue, and disclosure of UFOs it automatically means disclosure of free energy. Um, and I did hope we'd see that. I really did. We'd hope to see it. I hope. <coughs> I hope that by everything he meant everything. I really did hope that. Anyway, you carry on, mate. Um, they know that uh, the Montauk project involved uh, time and space travel. He's going to declassify that and tell all these, you know, so all these people that have been pushing, you know, Sverdlo and uh, that other guy that have been pushing all this Montauk rubbish for decades are going to be proven right. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Now, um, as far as Montauk goes, I, found, I find Stuart Swerdlow very credible indeed. I know you don't think much of him, but I find him very credible. Um, Al Bielek doesn't really, his story doesn't make much sense. For example, he doesn't really explain the time travel thing very well because, of course, it involves backwards, forwards and in backwards time travel, his story, without any explanation about how that is possible. Forwards time travel is actually not, in terms of the laws of physics, um, ironically, the best, the best description I ever heard of this paradox is by from Coxie. I can't stand Coxie, but he did a very, very good presentation on this. Uh, Travelling forward in time is not that difficult. You just have to travel very fast. <clears throat> there's, a bloke, there's a man called Valery Polyakov who's travelled more than a millisecond into the future. 1.8 milliseconds, I believe, because he spent 13 months on the Mir space station going around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour. That speed caused him to go forward in time going backwards in time is different it's not thought to be possible 
Bielek doesn't explain that. The other Montauk stuff, though, I think is very credible. Not only that, there is evidential, there's evidential data as well from the UFO Hunters investigation where Bill Burns and Richard Dolan went there and discovered underground chambers there in exactly the places that Swerdlow said they were. So, again, I, ho I hope that comes out. I do. So, we'll uh, carry on, Steve. Uh, John Hutchison was uh, really, uh, you know, a, a defence contractor and all his stuff is real. He's going to be declassifying all of this. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Um, John Hutchison is not a defence con contractor and never has been. Uh, John was, in 1983, John Hutchison was visited by Colonel John Alexander, or who was then part involved with DARPA, the Defa Department of Advanced um, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. I think it was called ARPA in those days, not the DARPA. But um, they spent a couple of months with him and observed him. This uh, Colonel John Alexander, of course, got involved with remote viewing and things like that as well. And he actually does the rounds at UFO conferences. Um, but uh, John Hutchison was in no way, excuse me, in no way was contract signed any kind of contract or got involved in any way with any state actor. He was uh, an independent researcher and inventor, and um, he worked. In fact, his um, his work was purloined against his will. He was actually arrested and his equipment was seized. So um, he's never been a defence contractor. Um, what else is there to declassify? Oh yeah, the aliens have bases all over the Earth, on the Moon, and uh, on Mars, and uh, you know, Antarctica is hollow, and uh, it's full of alien spacecraft and dinosaurs, and uh, cloned Hitlers. Um, if you uh, if you're a fan of Iron Sky too. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. Now, um, uh, Iron Sky 2, I've actually never seen. I've seen Iron Sky 1. I thought it was hilarious. It's just so funny. Um, but um, as far as the clone Hitler things go, that, that goes back to Boy, The Boys from Brazil, which is a very good film, actually. Um, uh, there are no dinosaurs in Antarctica. There, <laughs> there are no dinosaurs anywhere, unfortunately. I wish there were. It'd be great. I mean, Jurassic Park is a great movie. Um now, the Antarctica is not hollow, but there are facilities in Antarctica. Um, um, and from Jack, do you remember my video about Jack? Um, I think I made several videos about Jack of the Antarctic. I believe him. I do. I really do. He's very credible. What he says matches what other people have said. He, come, he I don't think he's putting on what he said to me. He had no reason to lie to me. And he's dead now, unfortunately, so we'll never know. Funnily enough, I was... Um, Someone mentioned. Someone wrote to me and mentioned Douglas Dietrich, a guy I've not watched for years, and I caught some of his uh, some of his new videos, and they're just they're a gish gallop. I can't make head or tail of him. He just goes on and on and on. But he's he goes on about Antarctica and the conspiracies he, to do with Roswell being German and things like that, oh, it's, or Japanese. Oh, it's it's a bit of a morass. But it's, he was. I'll, he's still. In, I still find him quite interesting in many ways. But uh, let's uh, let's see. Carry on. Now, um, <laughs> if Trump is going to declassify everything, oh yeah, and of course he's going to say that the uh, the NASA moon landings were all faked. It was all faked. He's going to declassify that. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. All oh, right. Yes, the moon landings. Um, I thought we'd come round to that. Um, well, uh, it's probably something he wouldn't bring up at this time. I mean, I think if you, I was hoping he'd just do the UFOs. He'd just do UFO disclosure and then he'd let, he'd let that settle in. He'd leave people in peace to let that settle in. Because that, let's face it, that is going to be that is going to be earth shattering. If he says, if he does like his disclosure speech, which could be as short as a few minutes, and he, he adds, "Oh yes, and nine eleven, oh yes, and the moon landings were fake, and all this other stuff," it's it's not a, you've got to be you've got to be to be a good communicator like that. You can't just dump only a ten tons of truth onto um, a people who've lived in a world of lies of universal deceit, as George Orwell said, for generations. 
you have to know a little bit about psychology. You have to do, essentially, I mean, I know you won't like me saying this, but you have to do what QAnon did. You have to ease them into it through platonic dialogue and encourage them to think for themselves. You've got to use a kind of, a, I suppose, a kind of benevolent mind control on this sort of thing. So I personally wouldn't have expected him to bring out the moon landing straight away. That's something that would come with time. It's a process. See, it would be a process. We start off with the UFOs. I think that would have to be the first thing. And then slowly but surely build on that. So, yeah. I mean, if, ironically, it was you who... I mean, I disagreed with you vehemently. I was quite angry with you for saying it. Because I know what you meant. You meant people like me. But you said some people need to be protected from themselves. From themselves. Even sane adults need to essentially be mollycoddled. And although I resented what you said I think in terms of the the general population there may be there may be some cause to introduce that kind of policy and I, I don't like saying that because I know it's patronizing but what am I supposed to say to people who just they see they see two towers turning into dust and they say oh those planes did it <laughs> well they say a big triangle the size of a, the size of a city and they say, oh, it's flares. I mean, what do you do with people who really believe that? All right, let's carry on. Um, and now, uh, if, of course, uh, uh, <clears throat> when he starts declassifying everything, there is no mention of Roswell. Well, there's no mention of 9-11. No mention of Hutchison, free energy. <clears throat> Um, what was it I just mentioned? Oh, the NASA moon landings, yeah. If there is no mention of any of that, then I think we can take it to the bank that it's all fiction. It's all conspiracy theorist claptrap. It's just drivel to give them something to do on a Sunday afternoon. Sit in front of a camera and relate these science fiction and general fiction stories. This uh, ridiculous bloody rubbish you know 30,000 million 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 stars okay steve it's not a sunday afternoon okay it's a tuesday afternoon in fact it's a tuesday night it's quarter past 10 in the evening at the moment i'm doing this quite late um well i mean i don't know how many if there's any other piece of rhetoric you'd like to use i mean i could i could everything you've just said I could say about 2 plus 2 equaling 4. I could say it's rubbish, it's claptrap, it's fiction. 2 plus 2 does not equal 4, equals 5. People who think 2 plus 2 equals 4 just sit in front of cameras and say things just past the time. All these other, all this other propagandist words that, that you use. Would 2 plus 2 equal 5 as a result of that? Do you have to, if you say that, does 2 plus 2 therefore equal 5? You understand that the fallacy, don't you? That you're talking about. As for, <coughs> can we take it to the bank if if this is not this, this is not disclassified? No, we can't. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The fact that Trump did not disclose doesn't mean, or just said he was going to disclose everything and didn't, means that then there's nothing to disclose. To be honest, Trump did not disclose everything by any definition of that word. Even if you're completely mainstream and don't believe anything that you don't see in the news. Even then, Trump didn't declassify everything. He's, there's still a lot of material, there's still a lot of things, questions that need unanswered, that need answering about um, perhaps the death of Justice Scalia. Do you remember the guy who... He suffocated himself with his own pillow in bed. <laughs> oh, that goodness me. That's, that reminds me of Blackadder and the deaths of the Archbishop of Canterbury. You know, oh, oh yes, he accidentally stabbed himself to death while shaving, things like that. <laughs> yeah um so uh, yeah the it's the truth of the matter is trump was sha the decision was take, taken out of his hand he, he was really shackled actually especially in the last few months this is why the reason he didn't i've look, been looking into this the new information has come to light about why he didn't pardon assange and snowden it's because he needed to he needed to read a uh, classified defense briefing before he could do that and he was denied access to it mean that he couldn't legally pardon them um i don't that's a new information i don't have a lot of information on that but i will get i'll look into that hopefully for a future video but that's an explain that's an explanation of why he didn't actually pardon them 
Johnston can sit there talking about cyborgs. Oh, everyone, we're all being replaced by cyborgs. Completely ridiculous, of course. What would be the point of that, exactly? <laughs> What's, uh, have you got rid of the human race? What exactly are the cyborgs going to be doing? <laughs> Absolute. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Um, I haven't checked Miles' channel lately. Uh, the cyborg thing, now, the thing is... um. It's, it sounds ridiculous, but the idea of what's called transhumanism is very much in the vogue at the moment. And there's, met, there's serious plans for enhancements to the, the biological out makeup of a human being involving electronic implants and things like that. Um, that's being seriously considered. Of course, it's been developed for military um, purposes, for example, giving soldiers special implants to make them make them go for a lot longer without sleep and need less food and things like that it's all kinds of stuff like that but um of course it will be spread out into other areas before long and um i mean already we have um a huge amount of chemicals put into us and medications um some obviously some of that is very very helpful and very useful i mean if you you if, when, when penicillin came along who knows how many lives that saved but um it's also the mass medication is, has a sinister side to it, as I've discussed in my um, other videos, like my zombie video, which you might have seen. I think you did. I think you probably commented on it, actually. Anyway, I'll take it away, Steve. Drivel. Black goo. Oh, no. The, the black goo. Yeah, declassify the black goo. We've got sentient black goo. It's, it's alien, and it's been here for decades, and it's controlling the Illuminati. And then they're carrying around... Uh, they're carrying around leg bags full of black goo. <laughs> 30,000 million, million, million stars. Um, the, the, the black goo is not controlling the Illuminati. It's something independent of them. That's the thing. It's, it's possible they've managed to get samples of it. They're trying to mess around with it. But, yeah. Um, I've mentioned the black goo anyway in previous videos to you, Steve. Um, I've explained about the... The, the berserk incident in the Gulf of Mexico. I've explained about the other uh, Harold Kausvela and what he's discovered about black goo. Um, it is real. I know you scoff at it, but it is actually a real thing. And wireless transmission of energy, uh, death rays, and uh, all this sort of stuff. So we're going to completely declassified. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. Um. The death rays, now this all relates to the Tesla stuff, and I don't mean Elon Musk's Tesla. Um, the wireless transmission, I mean, these things and the wireless transmission of electricity, that all ties in with free energy. So, yeah, it's possible. But it, 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 it's theoretically possible, but it hasn't happened yet. OK, so let's wait with bated breath. And, of course, if uh, none of that is declassified, I think we can put a line through it all as being science fiction or general fiction claptrap. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, no, we cannot, Steve. As I've just explained to you, um, just because these things don't come out doesn't mean they don't exist. Just because there's many, many reasons why, when whoever it was says Trump's going to declassify everything, he couldn't succeed. For all we know, it might have been a, just a, a diversion for his, for his political enemies. So, no, he, you, there's no point. You, you cannot conclude what you've concluded from this. Absolute drivel. Although, um, actually, uh, there is one. I could actually be wrong about the aliens, though. I could be wrong about aliens. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Ah, Steve going to confess something here. Yeah, I, I, when, when I, when I, I didn't know what. I didn't know where Steve was going with this. He's actually making a joke here. Um. Anyway, I, I would just wonder if he was being serious for a moment. And uh, I was quite surprised, actually, when... Because um, I never really thought there was anything to this alien stuff and the Roswell stuff, but uh, apparently uh, apparently Trump says otherwise. This is part of his uh, declassification. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Now, what Steve, what Steve is referring to here is Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. Um, there was a, they, they've done another sketch with Alec Baldwin playing Trump, and he's he's brilliant. He does it very very well. Um, he does a great impression of Trump, um, and there's lots of jokes in, in, about aliens, and some of it is quite interesting because he, he the, the 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 joke Trump character talks about how um, 
<laughs> there is oh yes there's aliens here and there's shapeshifters they're humans in disguise and uh, i know because alex jones told me and things like that and he makes lots of other jokes like uh, it's an alien invasions independence day scenario and he's, he's saying to the other he said oh guess what the aliens have just destroyed california and trump goes oh does that mean i just won the popular vote it's very funny um I really uh, there's there's gr some great ones actually they've done with Alec Baldwin and Jim Carrey, and Jim Carrey's playing Joe Biden. It's that's hilarious if you get the chance to see that. I absolutely love it. So J Steve is just making have he's just having a little wheeze here with us. <coughs> Israeli <coughs> space official Haim Ashed. Um, I know his brother actually, Garden, Garden Ashed, uh, pictured <laughs> on the, uh, the cover of a new book called The Universe <laughs> Beyond the Horizon. Now, he's written a book here, The <coughs> Universe Beyond, Beyond the Horizon. Presumably that's what that says. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Ah, uh, yes, this is the book that Jaime Shed is going to, is writing, or has written, or is going to write, or is going to be published, I don't know. Uh, but um, I, ju I discussed this in one of my UFO disclosure videos. Jaime Shed, one of the most senior figures of Israel's Ministry of Defence, <coughs> <coughs> has uh, come out and talked about aliens and Steve's going to go into this in the course of this video I have discussed this in a previous video and indeed I've addressed Steve's comments on my comments reply video about this particular subject but it's worth reiterating and expanding on a little bit uh, the book of course is in colloquial Hebrew which is the official language of Israel and uh, it's funny like a Hebrew was always like a classic language a bit like Latin in the Vatican just used for ceremonial purposes but it was actually adopted as a living language so essentially it was recreated and um, brought back from from being essentially a dead language to be a, like a living like a living um, language with its own modern version they're doing the same with Cornish and, and Manx and in, in, in this country um, those languages basically the, the last native speakers died out but um, they're basically now adapting it into a modern language so it's, it's wonderful when people do that uh, Hebrew has about colloquial Hebrew. I think has about six million speakers, mostly in Israel, but Jew, Jews across the world actually learn it now. Um, but of course, I'm not Jewish. I don't think Steve is either. I can't speak Hebrew, um, so the idea of translation is very important here because so far, all the original documents, every, all the original source material to do with Haim Shed is in Hebrew, and there's been some rather strange translations which I'll go into I've discussed this before but I mean the very title of the book might not be what it appears to be some languages you know are very difficult to translate into English directly um, German and Japanese are always named as one of those but uh, maybe Hebrew is one of them too mankind has made contact with an alien a galactic federation but it has been kept secret because humanity isn't ready former head of Israel's space security program claims Fair uh, 30,000 million, million, million stars. Yep, that's basically, it's in a nutshell. Now, as I've explained before, it sounds very Star Trek-y, Galactic Federation. It sounds very sort of New Agey and Star Trek-y. Um, now, I managed to get hold of the original documents on um, why not, why net il, and I ran it, I translated it myself using Google Translate, and um, I didn't... It actually came out of Space Unity, not not Galactic Federation, Space Unity. Um, I don't really know whether this was some kind of... When it was translated into English, whether they decided to use the term Galactic Federation just to have a laugh, or, or maybe to muddy the waters and make it sound... make General Shedd sound less credible than he was with what he said. We won't know until the book's... Well, until there's a proper translation of both the article and the book but yeah Trump is involved apparently um, there's a negotiations with the aliens but anyway Steve will elaborate it's the same old science fiction recurring themes you know humanity isn't ready it's been kept a secret because humanity isn't ready you know 30,000 million 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 stars yeah this I suppose this is a recurring it is kind of new age in the 60s i suppose um and there there are new age crossovers with ufos a lot of people who are in the new f in the new age milieu believe in ufos and vice versa I'm, I'm not one of them but a lot of people do i know that and um it's it takes all sort you know you ufo 
the idea of UFOs, it takes all sorts, you know. There's all kinds of people. I remember my video on Jay Posadas. I mean, there's really weird people get involved with this and manage to integrate UFOs into their, into their alternative belief systems. Um, so, yeah, this idea, we're not ready yet. We haven't evolved enough. I, I do hear this over and over again. And, in fact, in some very credible contact experiences, the extraterrestrials often tell their, their human friends that very thing. He would love. This guy would love to uh, would love to appear on 60 Minutes with an alien and uh, have them both being interviewed on on 60 Minutes. But mankind isn't ready. You know, it's the same old the same old recurring theme. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. Well, you know, it may be a bit ambitious to consider any kind of alien interview on 60 Minutes. I mean. Like in the the alien interview video, you know the, the difficulty in communicating with aliens is is very real. I've done an entire video on the alien interview. Um, there's also the film the film Arrival is very good. Now, um, in terms of uh, in terms of alien invasion films, I mean the alien invasion films vary a lot in technical quality and intellectual content. This scores very highly on both axes. It's probably the best alien invasion film of all, and it's is. You know, most of the film is about learning how to simply how to communicate with the aliens. Yeah, we, do you realise it may not be possible to put them on 60 Minutes because they may not know what to say. They may not underst even understand what's going on, even if they are more, far more intelligent than we are. It's this species comprehension crossover, which is a real problem. Now this guy's 87 years old, so he could be getting a little dotty. That's... 50,000 million 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 stars. Actually, I saw a recent interview with Heimer Shadow. I was looking for it after I read, um, after I um, listened to, I first watched Steve's video, and I couldn't, can't find it anywhere, but he's clearly not dotty. I mean, he's no Joe Biden. He seems, even despite his advanced age, and he's actually even older than Joe Biden by a decade, he's obviously a lot more with it. If I could find out if if I could find any actual interviews with him, recent interviews with him, I'll I'll let you know because you you just watch him, you'll see what I mean. He's clearly compass mentis. Um, anyway, <clears throat> he was the head of Israel's space security program for nearly thirty years. He's a retired general. Described he described the so-called Galactic Federation, which supposedly runs an underground Mars base in secret pact with Washington. <laughs> 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, Robert David Steele has said something similar. There's others like, the, like Stephanie Ralph and people like that. Now, um, if there are extraterrestrials visiting us, then the idea of a, a base on Mars is perfectly plausible. Along with the moon, it's a very, very good place to observe the Earth from a distance without being seen. I've often said, you know, that the, the dark side of the moon or the far side of the moon, to give it to be more scientifically accurate, is probably the kind of place where aliens would set up um, some observation post if they were tra like a forward operating base, if they were regularly visiting the Earth. Because um, the dark side of the moon is, firstly, it's very close to the Earth. It's like, it's like several thousand, several hundred square miles of, or thousand square miles of... Um, I forgot what it was. Is it's four hundred thousand square miles of real estate, plenty of room to build. Find the exact the perfect place for your base, and you're completely invisible from the ground from the Earth. It's one of the few places in the, in the universe which is completely invisible from uh, from people on the Earth for a reason other than sheer distance, and it's incredibly close by cosmic standards. It's next door. So Mars again? Why not? Exactly the same. It has all the advantages close to the Earth, and it's not. There's no human presence on Earth. Uh, there's a very li limited human presence on Mars, which is so far restricted to outside the secret space program, is restricted to robot probes. So let him carry on. <coughs> but the aliens had to intervene to stop Donald Trump when he <laughs> when he appeared on the verge of blurting out their secrets. Yes, yeah, I, I, I'm sure um, Donald Trump will be able to sit there and explain in detail exactly how the interstellar drive system for their spacecraft worked. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Well, um, Donald Trump may not be able to, but his Uncle John probably would, because his Uncle John was very close to the, uh, the cover-up of Tesla's technology. That's a, that's a big story. But the, the Black Vault, is it the, uh, no, the Dark Journalist has done a video about that. That's very good. 
Um, Trump, as you know, has made odd comments about UFOs that indicate something he knows more than he's saying and indeed wants to say more than he's saying. And I've made entire videos about that. Excuse me. Um, also, um, it's it's interesting if, if this is true that the aliens actually stopped him. I mean, how and why and all kinds of questions like that. Um, <coughs> I don't know. Um, obviously, in that case, they are actively participating in the human cover-up with full knowledge of what it is. So, yeah, very strange. He told Israeli paper, you, 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 you idiot, are or not. Mm, okay. So, um, and the 87-year-old Ashed said aliens will not come into the open until humanity can evolve and reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. Well, I would have thought that was pretty bloody obvious, you know. Space is uh, the distance between the planets and the stars, and spaceships are vehicles to uh, traverse those distances. Um, that doesn't make very much sense at all, does it? 30,000 million, million, million stars. Um, yeah, um... I suppose it doesn't really, does it? Um, but it could be a trick question, or maybe another translation error. Um, the, we may know more when the book comes out. And interestingly, this the book by Ashed is likely to come out around about the same time as A.V. Loeb's, another Israeli, who is who's the discoverer of a muamua. Um, hmm. It's interesting how these things go come together, don't they? It's like, a, is it a, is it a coincidence? Hmm. But there's always got to be a reason why they won't interact. You know, he can't show us an alien. He can't show us any evidence of any aliens. He can't show us any pictures of any aliens that he's interacted with. He can't show us any pictures of their vehicles. Because this has got Philip Corso written all over it, hasn't it? He's written a book. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Oh, yes, The Day After Roswell by Philip Corso and William Burns, yes. Um, it's an odd thing, that. I mean, I do, I do wonder about these sort of things. I mean, as far as the pictures of aliens go, you'd, you would say they were fake even anyway, though, Steve, wouldn't you? You'd say nothing. As for Philip Corso, I mean, you bring this up later on as well, and I'll, I'll cover more, I'll say more about Philip Corso in a little while. But, uh, in that book has been one of the, um, one of the most detailed and most extensive and I think most con also most confusing and most mind-numbing publications that's ever come out in ufology. But I'll say more about that in a minute because you're going to bring you bring it up in more detail in a soon. And um, it's going to be a science fiction yarn, just like uh, just like Philip Corso's ridiculous bloody rubbish. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. Uh, well, um, what will it be? Hmm. Um, Oh, as far as, the, as far as the book... All right, we'll talk, talk about Hamish Shedd's book. Well, am I supposed to say thanks for the review? You haven't read the book yet, Steve. I mean, I understand your misgivings about Corso, considering Corso, but, you know, you don't know this is going to be a repeat of the Philip Corso fact, uh, fiasco. It could be something very different. We don't know the book. All I've ever seen is a, as a cover of this book with uh, Hebrew text on it, nothing in English. As far as I know, the book's not been published yet. I don't even know if it's been written yet. But you know you can't go making reviews of a book before which you haven't read and hasn't been published yet. It's like it's like the critics of Capel Green, you know they're already they're already coming out of the closet and saying what an awful film it is. The film hasn't even been released yet. I mean that's got to be historic within the world of cinema and 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 cinematic criticism that um, the critics have already released their reviews before the the film has been released. So um, give it a chance. Give it a chance. That's what I'm saying. Yes, OK. Can you imagine flying across the galaxy to have a cup of tea with Trump, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, aliens. Uh, you, you guys must be from, uh, from Mexico. How'd you get over my wall? 30,000 million, million, million stars. Okay. Oh, yes, the old joke about the aliens. Yes, I know. Um, you see, um, first, I don't know actually if the, if the aliens drink tea. Um, maybe they do. I hope so, because that's, that's why I tend to serve where I'm living. But, um, yeah, the, the word alien in English has, obviously has two meanings. And um, 
there's lots of jokes which you can make about that about aliens from outer space and aliens people from other countries as immigrants and things like that other languages distinguish between the two you have some some languages have a different word for illegal aliens entering the country otherwise people in other words and aliens from outer space but english unfortunately does not so speaking <coughs> of uh, speaking of, um, <coughs> speaking of an agreement between the u.s government and the alien okay. visitors um he's reading from an article now oh well the shed said the extraterrestrials wanted to work with American agents to study the fabric of the universe. Well, realistically, do you think any aliens that are capable of travelling interstellar distances and certainly visiting here are going to need any information from us? <laughs> 30,000 million, million, million stars. All oh, right. Well, um, I suppose... This is, this is an interesting point. I mean, te people talk about technology exchange and deals, and well, what exactly? How exactly would that work between two species that were so different? Unless they are very closely related to us, possibly in evolutionary terms. It's often said that humans are actually biologically identical to some of the aliens. So, it's obviously if they have, if they've advanced in technology ahead of us, then we, they can't really. I suppose they can't really expect us to know any more than they do. So I, mean, I, mean, I agree with Steve on that, I have to say. Well, they don't want to start with mass hysteria. They want to first make us sane and understanding. So we're going to get visited by a bunch of interstellar psychologists. They're going to sit us down and they're going to want us to... They're going to want to have long chats about our childhoods. 30,000 million, million, million stars. <laughs> Can you imagine alien psychoanalysts, you know? <laughs> Steve makes a joke about that. I won't, I won't play it, but he makes a very funny joke about that. Now, this thing about mass hysteria, I do, I do get... I find these people, usually they're in government service of some kind or another, who, who say this. They say, hey, man, we can't say anything because there'll be a mass panic, man. We'll have a panic on our hands, man. And things like that. And, of course... The question I always say whenever, if I ever hear people saying that, I say, well, why do you think that? You're not panicking. I say, yeah, I'm not panicking, man, but I'm superior. I'm superior. Other people are inferior to me, and so they would panic, man. And, of course, you, you can ask around a large number of people and say, look, would you panic if this happened? And they tend to say no. In which case... <laughs> Is it possible that um, they just everyone's sort of going around thinking everyone else would panic, and some like I say, some of them just do it because it makes them feel superior to pose. It's like the the poses we've had with other things, you know, you know the MBAs and the everyone's a shill posers and um, things like that. So I'm afraid I'm, I um, the idea of mass hysteria. I I find it, of course, it's possible, but the fact that it's coming from an institution generally. That has such an incredibly low opinion of humanity that they just think we're worth nothing. I mean, even in world, you know, despite in World War Two, do you remember how we dealt with World War Two with enormous courage and stoicism? I made this point in my Helen Duncan video. But yeah, oh no, man, they'll panic. Everyone's going to panic, man. They'll just think we're out like a bunch of frightened sheep and we'll bolt because that's how they see us. They regard us as just one more species of farm animal. They wouldn't say it, of course, they, but they, that's, that's their position on us. So, and it's, it's, if the aliens are kind of going along with that, then, yeah, it makes me dubious about who these aliens are or if they exist at all. I do accept that maybe there is another story behind Heimer Shed that's not E.T. related and there's another explanation for what he's doing. I don't know. Until that point, he said the aliens have secured an agreement to keep their movements secret. You know, Thirty thousand million, million, million stars. They've secured a they've an agreement to keep their movements secret. Really? So they actually need us to. They need our cooperation, do they? Do you mean if we don't agree, then we could expose them? It's like this stuff about alien abduction. You know, they they say. We've done a deal with the aliens, man. We allow them to abduct humans and take their sperm and over, and in return they give us A, B, and C secret technology. The aliens, if this is some kind of 
negotiation. And we don't, humans don't really have much of a bargaining chip to bring to the table, do we? I've, I've made this point before. The aliens can do these things regardless. And we, we humans are actually pretty powerless to stop them. They can take cattle, they can mutilate them, they can take people and do all kinds of things to them. Some usually luckily returning them to their, their homes, but not always. And um, we, we seem to be pretty helpless, actually, in their with their presence, which is one of the reasons why I think they keep it, the government are keeping it a secret, because again, mass hysteria, man. Well, it is, it would be frightening. I think, I don't think it would cause mass hysteria. Most people would not panic. I, I certainly would not panic. But obviously, you know, if, if you really have that incredibly low opinion of the human race in general, that's what you would think. And uh, is it Paul Hellier, Peter Hellier, Paul Hellier, the Canadian defense minister, or he was 50 odd years ago. He's saying he knows this guy's right. He doesn't doubt it for a minute. I don't know. But of course, this is just his opinion. You know, he says, oh, alien spacecraft are, are as real as the aircraft above your head. That's Hellier. But he doesn't produce any evidence to that effect. He doesn't show us any pictures. He doesn't hold up an ashtray from an alien spacecraft, a windscreen wiper from an alien spacecraft. You know, a towel is stolen from an alien spacecraft on his many visits to these other planets with these people. 30,000 million, million, million stars. He's <laughs> he actually did go on a spaceship, but um, he had on a cookbook, and it said on the front, to serve man, and he did a bolt out the door. That's a, that's a Twilight Zone reference, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, now, Paul Helly is an amazing chap. He's 97 years old. He's writing a book, too, which I'm lo looking forward to, to reading. And he's, he's as sharp as a button, despite being 97. He's 20 years older than Biden, but he's sharp as a razor. And he's really, really with it, and um, he does lectures and tours and things like that. Incredible guy. And um, he says these things because he means it. He, he has, he's an engineer. He uh, was a politician, defence minister, as I said. He's got... Excuse me. He's got nothing to gain at all by making this up. Everything to lose, like General Ashed. So let's carry on, Steve. Whoops, what's happening now? Whoops, there we are. He's doing a Philip Corso and just writing a load of old rubbish because he thinks the book will generate enough interest that um, it'll put some money in the bank and get his grandchildren through through college. I think that's what Corso actually admitted to in the end, wasn't it? He just wanted to sell enough copies to put his grandchildren through college and the only way he could do that was by incorporating all that sort of Roswell claptrap. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Um, I read The Day After Roswell and thought it was... I've got to be honest, I thought it was a pretty terrible book. Um, by the way, Paul Hellyer does show evidence, by the way, I must say that. Um, but again, Philip Corso's book, he co-wrote co it with Bill Burns. Then when the book's published, Bill Burns' name appears in a tiny little letters on the cover, and he's not referred to at all in the content. It appears he divorced himself from this project at some point. Um, and when you read through it, I mean, I've talked about it before. It's like, oh, God. It's like, oh, they, they put the alien on the, Roswell. They put the alien on the back of a lorry, and they dropped in at some army base where Corso was on guard duty and he he looked in the back well the the the, the squaddies who were driving the coach went the, driving the lorry they went off to the toilet and <laughs> Elia looked in the back oh it's an alien in the back <laughs> it's, it reminds me a bit of these, these stupid stories about the Berwyn mountains oh yeah i'll just put the put the alien on the back of a lorry and drive it down to port and down would you lads <laughs> they stop in at stop in at the service station you know nip in and get a wagon wheel and a cup of coffee Hey, Dave, did you remember to lock the lorry? <laughs> now, I know it's... Steve, it is a ridiculous book. The more I think about it and the more I look back on it and I realise how how incredibly... Um, what an incredible morass of nonsense it is. Um, but as far as Corso is saying he just wanted money to put his children through college, I mean, obviously he was very conf confident it would sp sell well. Um, has he actually confessed that? Obviously he's dead now, but did he actually confess... To doing that, because I'd like to, I'd like to see a source for that if you if you don't mind. And uh, of course, uh, aliens aren't going to come here and liaise with Trump or the Americans and the Israelis. You know, I mean, can you imagine an alien species travelling across the galaxy and saying, "Well, the only two languages we know are uh, a kind of English, um, I think you call it American, and uh, Hebrew." Um, <clears throat> if they're going to visit us, they would have been studying everybody for a very long time, and they're going to know what the languages are. 
30,000 million, million, million stars. They do, though, Steve. That's the thing. They do. Um, they have been here for a very long time, and they do know how to communicate out with us. I think you're anthropomorphizing when you say, oh, they never want to talk to Trump. They wouldn't bother with Israel or America, things like that. Um, you're putting yourselves in their shoes, which you can't do, even if they have two feet. They've been with us a long time. They know these things. We don't know. I don't think it's possible to ass assign motives to them when we don't even know how they think. I mean, they may not even have brains, and they may have some other kind of organ to think with, and we don't know. It's it's a uh, it's a conundrum, but I think you, you shouldn't assume. To, it's best not to assume too much and just go with the evidence. I'd say that's the big question, isn't it? What would be in that for them? We would have absolutely nothing whatsoever to offer them, um, and they certainly wouldn't want to be telling us about their technology they're not going to want to tell us how their interstellar drive system works they're not going to tell us if they've figured out how to control how they've figured out to control gravity so the ships can have artificial gravity inside them Thirty thousand million 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 stars well you see the thing is like we it's possible that we may not be able to understand it it may be something where we we don't know exactly how it would work and it may not be possible to explain I mean, we can't explain how our... If you have a pet dog, you can't explain to the dog how your car works or your television set. The dog could not comprehend that. It's possible that we're in a similar situation. On the other hand, I mean, people say, well, why would they want to come here? What would be in it for them? I mean, we, what's, what contactees often say, they're often told, is that Earth has a very, is very rich in terms of its life. It has um, a very rich... Um, it has a very rich kind of um, DNA array, if that's the right word. It's a kind of coral reef of the universe, lots of different kind of life forms that you don't actually get that on other planets quite to the extent that Earth has. Well, not obviously, not in the, obviously you do if you travel far enough, but in the local area in the galaxy, the Earth is, has, is renowned for being incredibly abundant in terms of its variety of life. And they're actually harvesting DNA. Now... The thing about it is, if they're doing that, again, they don't need our permission to do that. Um, they could just do it. I mean, in fact, they don't even need to do any of the things that are often assigned to them for that purpose. For example, people say things like, oh, they, they abduct people to get their DNA. They mutilate the cows to get their DNA. Um, no, you don't. If you want to get DNA from humans, you don't, you don't need to do anything. You could do it without them knowing. You just pick up one of their hairs from a, from from inside the plug hole after they've shaved or something, you know, or cut their hair. Um, just go into the bathroom when no one's looking and just pick one of the little hairs out of the plug hole. They, police do the police do this all the time. They get DNA specimens from just a little bit of hair or skin cell or something, anything. You just need one cell. Every single cell of your body has a complete genome in it. And as for the cattle mutilations, I mean, if you want to get say a DNA from cattle in a, in a farm. You don't need to pick them up, abduct them, and leave them and dump them back in the field where curious people can find them. You can just do it secretly by taking a little fur, a little bit of hair from their jacket and things like that. Um, what, the question is, if we were capable of comprehending what they have, I mean, we don't know whether they would share it with us or not. That's the thing, we don't know that. And when they're travelling around inside a planet's gravitational field, how do they use anti-gravity to fly around the planet? Couldn't use anti-gravity drive to fly through space, of course. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, yes, it could. Now, this is something you brought up before. I think you've got this idea that, that anti-gravity actually needs the presence of a, a natural gravitational field to work in the same way. This is the flat earthers often talk about rockets. They say things, well, well, what would the rocket push against? It needs an atmosphere to push against it. If it, if it's, if it, it works by blowing exhaust out of, its, out of it, you need something to push against. No, it doesn't because of Newton's third law. It's not pushing against anything. The, uh, the actual rocket exhaust is pushing against the rocket. Um, and, of course, you explain this to flat earthers, and sometimes they sort of nod their heads, and they go, mm, and then they come up with some other very strange argument. But, um, no, the, um, the presence of a gravitational field may not be necessary. It's actually, Rich Planet TV did a very good explanation of this. It's possible that they have some method of generating a gravity well 
in the direction of movement of the craft, wherever it might be in the universe. So it could generate an artificial gravity well into which the craft would move. And then you could adjust the pres where the you want that well. For example, if you want to slow, do slow down very quickly, you simply switch the well to the rear end of the craft and it acts as a brake. Um, so no, you don't need um, you don't need anything like that. I mean, you misunderstand you misunderstand what is meant by anti-gravity or gravi gra gravitational propulsion. We don't know. Actually, we won't know that until we actually find out how it works from one. Of, well, maybe they have in the secret government, but um, hmm. There you are. And um, probably the question that should have been asked first, but would have been will be in, in fact asked fourth, is why <laughs> are you here? That would be the most important question you could be asking any alien. Because from where I'm sitting, uh, there would be nothing in the visit for them. Nothing whatsoever. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Well, again, we don't know, we don't know that. We don't know why, what, why they're here. As I said, there's, they're, doing, they're, they're interacting with us, they're aware of us, they're interacting with, with us in terms of abduction, cattle mutilation. We don't know why. There's no real. Just, we know there's some kind of a reproductive thing when it comes to when it comes to the uh, the, the abductions, but the cattle mutilations make no sense at all. Their purpose, you see, their purpose could be beyond our comprehension, or it could be something. It could be something unexpected. I mean, there's lots of alien invasion stories or first contact stories involving good aliens, um, also bad aliens. There's things such as. I mean, I do like the. The uh, Childhood's End is a, by Arthur C. Clarke is a good is a good novel because it's a science fiction novel about an alien contact. Um, bad aliens, of course. There's new. There's Independence Day and War of the Worlds, etc. But what about indifferent aliens? I mean, this is there's a in terms of alien invasion stories. There's one that's really unusual one that stands out, and it's a book written. It's a Russian novel from the 70s written by uh, the Strugatsky brothers, and it's called Roadside Picnic. And it's worth reading. There's lots of English... Tra there's two English translations of it you can get pick up. And it's... Uh, what happens is these aliens land on the Earth, and then they just take off again and go away. And they leave behind lots of little pieces, like um, various artefacts that don't really make much sense. No one knows what they're for, but they become very, very valuable. They're people, people pay a lot of money for them, and they're like... Um, trinkets, jewellery, and various other things like that. And um, there's even these people called stalkers who go into this zone where the aliens landed, where everything everything behaves really weirdly because the aliens were there to pick up these little bits and pieces and take them home and sell them. There's a film called Stalker by Andrei Tarkovsky, which is loosely based on the roadside picnic story. But um, what's what's in interesting is it appears that the aliens didn't have any purpose when they came here they seemed to come and go and for reasons of their own and they didn't even seem to notice us they left behind this really weird this really weird effect but it wasn't intentional and they compare it actually to a some people sitting down and having a picnic by the side of the road and leaving behind litter and then the the ants and the bugs and the beetles and bees fly around all the little bits that were left behind the old sweet wrappers and things like that and the apple cores and they think what's this what's it they don't understand it's rather like that very very good book if you get the chance to read it and the film is very very good not that i wouldn't bother with the new the new one i mean the old one the original one the russian one by andrei tarkovsky is really really good hmm. it's not the first claim of its kind similar ideas have been circulating for years in 2011 Former Canadian Defence Minister Paul Hellyer, remember he was Defence Minister in Canada between 1965 and 1967, I think, we're, we're talking a long time ago. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, does it matter? Is, is, it, is that a point? I mean, we see, this is another article he's reading from now. Um, so what if he was defence minister from 65 to 67? The fact of the matter is, he, he was an official. He was a guy in a position where you, by, by his very nature of what you're doing, you need to be sound of mind. You need to be um, able to conduct yourself properly. It's, it, it makes no difference how many years he was defence minister. None at all. Announced that we were routinely visited by extraterrestrials while former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence Christopher Mellon and U.S. political insider John Podesta 
have both expressed their belief that non-human technologies exist on Earth. Well, you know, because you hold a reasonable position in government or, you know, in some sort of scientific um, establishment doesn't mean that you're not gullible, you know. These people can form these opinions. Um, having an opinion in, is one thing. Um, demonstrating your opinion is fact is something completely different. And no, not one of these people has yet managed to do that. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Yes, but you see, they have, Steve. They have. I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is this evidence exists. I know you deny it, but it exists. It's there. And I, I know very well that you know, appeal to authority, if you go to down into an appeal to authority route you can go too far and simply say well because someone important says something then it must be true i mean really the whole thing with with colonel corso in his book was that i mean the whole thing was sold on an appeal to authority because he was a very senior pentagon official and so he created what well, i agree it sounds like a work of fiction it certainly is not credible it doesn't fit with the facts and it, is, it was his position i think which sold that book Bill Burns obviously bailed out and clearly didn't fall out with the author, the, the other author. But um, but again, at the same time, you've got to wonder why if someone like them rather, rather than me, and I mean, you make a few comments about me in a minute, but it's a simple point. I mean, they've got a lot more to lose than I have. So many of them have spoken out. It's a shed, it's Hellier, it's the whole TTSA bunch. Are they all crazy? Are they all, have they all lost their minds? Surely not. We should believe them, right? Well, no. Exactly. He's reading from an article now. Their claims are powerful statements of faith, but not of fact. Not true. After years of talking to UFO witnesses and government insiders, I concluded that while people have always had inexplicable experiences, the belief that we're being visited <coughs> by technologically superior alien beings is just that, a belief shaped by our own human culture and experience. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, what could I say? It's just not true. Everything that he's just read, written is not true. It's the exact opposite of the truth. I could unpick it, but really, I've already done that. I've unpicked it in all these videos I've made on this subject. So, yeah, we should believe them. I mean, there is fact. There is evidence. It would stand up in a court of law, I believe. There's been mock in congressional hearings. There's been official congressional hearings. The governments are spending millions and millions of pounds on investigating this. Even And they've just admitted that they've been investigating secretly. There's a new organisation that's going to publish public reports. It's real, Steve. It's real whether you like it or not. You you may accuse us of sort of like letting our hearts rule our head, but, you know, sceptics do that too. Because, uh, you know, science fiction stories abound. It doesn't matter whether they come from the, you know, the sort of Ben Emlyn Jones, yellow vest clad and bin man, or whether they come from, you know, people that are working in the space industry. It's like Gordon Cooper with his, science, with his UFO yarn that turned out to be a story that he overheard. And then he claimed it for himself about the UFO landing at the Air Force Base, you know. 30,000 million, million, million stars. A yellow vest clan, is it? I'm my yellow vest! I'm McBin man! <laughs> All right, well, Gordon Cooper, now, um, as far as the Gordon Cooper... I mean, you're referring to the whole Eisenhower, Edwards Air Force Base thing. All right, I don't know much about that, but Gordon Cooper did see aliens he saw ufos now gordon cooper this happened in 1965 he actually he actually set a space endurance record i think he went five times he did five orbits of the earth which was a lot in those days and he, the radio transcripts there and you can actually use even a recording bogey's 10 o'clock high he was seeing extraterrestrial artifacts and you know mission control said what was that bogey's 10 o'clock high he stood by this story his entire life I know he went a little bit loopy towards the end of his life, you know, of course, because he was getting old, like Joe Biden, but he maintained it before then, and during then and after then, his whole damn life. Why would he give it up? Why, why would he make it up? A man in his position, you know, this, this very... He was the last solo astronaut America had. He went up in the Mercury craft by himself. After that, all other missions had at least either two or more astronauts. Eshed and others of this new priesthood may absolutely believe what they are saying. That's an incredibly patronising and narrow-minded thing. Not this, not Steve saying it, although he may believe it. This is he's now reading from an article. 
thing, but we shouldn't feel compelled to believe them. The sort of people that do believe them are the sort of people like uh, Ben Emlyn Jones. Just, you know, the, <laughs> I'm not in that article. Yeah. Believe that the, 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 the there's <laughs> there's two there's two people on the face of the earth that believe the Queen of England is uh, a shape shifting lizard from outer space, and uh, Ben Emlyn Jones is both of them. I don't. Well, am I schizophrenic now, Steve? You're referring to David Icke as well, are you? I think that uh, even David Icke believes that nonsense. 30,000 million, million, million stars. The, the idea of human, humanoid shape-shifting, um, shape-shifting aliens, interdimensional aliens, that do appear in reptilian form, I'm not the only person who says that. I think David Icke has never denounced that. Um, if you find me somewhere where he says he was wrong, let me know. But... Um, I think you'll find that it's actually a serious, it's a serious proposition, and I have talked with you about this in other videos. I'm not going to repeat myself now, but, you know, obviously I think there is something to this, as bizarre as it might sound. <coughs> uh, belief, co belief colours even the most finely honed perceptions. The ET faithful will point to videos, photographs and case studies, all blurry of course, as evidence for their beliefs. Yet while superficially convincing, None of them represent proof of E.T. visitation. One person's metamorphosing cuboid spacecraft will be another's weather balloon, even if both people are Top Gun fighter pilots. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Where do I start with that? That is outra it's outrageous. Everything you've just heard is... It's insulting and it's stupid i mean et faithful i mean even the term et faithful is it shows that there is an agenda here there's an absolute agenda it is um it is biased and the the, the journalist writing this obviously has an axe to grind and wants to portray people like me in a certain way what about the skeptic truth faithful hmm? i mean that the article puts out lots of cliches and usual the usual kind of skeptic tropes that they always use out but you know i could say the same about skeptics there are skeptics who are exactly the same now, i don't think you're one of them steve i think you're a bit more open-minded but there are literally skeptics who fall exactly into what the late great stanton friedman said don't bother me with the facts my mind's made up they literally are they have a belief they have a positive belief in the non-existence of the kind of phenomenon that i believe in and they are as doctrinaire and in, in, unable to think logically as the as the heaven's gate or the the most far out loonies that you're ever going to find that are way beyond anything like I am and that's a fact Steve I've, can, I've seen them I know they are I've analyzed them you, I've done entire videos on this I'm looking for proof I've spent a long time looking for proof I used to go and sit on the top of Cradle Hill back in the 70s with bloody Peter Padgett 30,000 million, million, million stars. Well, it's all coming out now, isn't it? You, Steve, honestly, are you serious? You went to Warminster. You went to Warminster and you, you actually went to Cradle Hill. Where I went in 2015, you actually went there. You went up to Cradle Hill and you did Sky Watches. Was Peter Padgett? You knew, did you know Peter Padgett? Are you? This is all. This is a big revelation coming from Steve Mumbling. I didn't know this. I'm not. I've not heard him mention this before. Are you saying you used to be a woo-woo like me, and then you became a skeptic? Is that right? Are you actually saying that, Steve? I'm not uh, quite uh, quite something. I mean, I think that's uh, cast the whole thing in maybe in a different light. Maybe I have to do a little bit of amateur psychology on you and wonder, you know, hmm, because we, we tend to do this to each other, people do it to me, um, I'm willing to do that to others, so, uh, yeah, I wonder, did something happen to you, a bit, a bit of a Susan Blackmore type moment, where you felt betrayed, or you felt you betrayed yourself, or you had a bad experience which led you onto the sceptic path, hmm, Please, perhaps you could make a video, Steve, uh, with more details about your interaction with Peter and Warminster. I'll ask Peter, actually, if he knows you. Oh, I wonder. Hmm, he may remember you, you know. Uh, thanks for uh, continuing. Okay, Steve's in a new... He's, this is the second video now. He's driving along. It's a bright, sunny day. And it's just after he's just wishing us a happy new year. So, happy new year, Steve. Um, and he's got, he's got his camera set up in his holden, as usual. So, uh, let's carry on. Going to watch the chat. Uh, thanks for the uh, thanks for the comments as well. A lot of them are quite entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, <clears throat> I saw one this morning, I was having my breakfast and I just had a very quick look at YouTube and uh, Ben Emling Jones said, try and get up or stay awake for the live stream and I thought, well if it's going to be at 7pm his time, it's going to be 3am my time <clears throat> and I'm sorry Ben, but it's just not going to happen mate, I'm not staying up or getting up early uh, just to watch you on YouTube. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Look, if I can get up to be on, on, the, on Timothy Beckley and Tim Schwartz's thing at 3 a.m., because they do one late at Pacific time, right? Surely you can get up at 3 a.m. And get, and get involved in a live stream. Look, I'll do it even the weekend one, Steve. Come on, do you work weekends as well? I know you do a lot of work on your house and you, you take tiles off your roof and stuff like that, but still, come on. Join us just once. Stick stick some pins under your, stick some matchsticks under your eyes and down the extra strong espresso and join us. Eh? And it's interesting how people really can't see or really couldn't see that you know there was no electoral fraud that Trump was lying through his teeth. How could anybody not see that? I don't I don't understand it. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Of course, he's referring to the US election. Now, um, I'm not, I don't think I can discuss this in detail on YouTube, simply because of um, the, the, the censorship that's actually imposed on us. This, I could probably lose this video if I did it, or I'd have to make it an all tech exclusive. But, you know, I have actually done videos, I've done live streams, I've said what I can on YouTube, and there's also some alt tech exclusives. I, I think I've done about three or four of them now over the last couple of weeks in which I uh, outline my reasons for thinking that's simply not true what you've just said is completely false there's also older videos which I made before the um, the Iron Curtain of um, of Orwellian thought control came down to the extent that it has now you can also look at those as well um, I know the courts threw out the fraud case but I mean there's reasons what the reasons for that I think of um, need what can I say? Further, further examination, and that's all I can say on YouTube right now. But do check out Bitshoot Odyssey Library. My channel's there. There's an awful, there's a lot of material on there which I don't put on YouTube. So check those out. And uh, I thought after the debacle yesterday, I thought, well, really, what they should be doing is uh, invoking the Twenty Fifth Amendment and actually getting rid of that guy because. Um, before the before the uh, the twentieth of January, just get him out of there, you know, because he's uh, he's an absolute disgrace to the Republican Party. And if they want to um, if they want to retain any kind of credibility, <coughs> you know, if the Republican Party really wants some sort of political future, they're going to need to distance themselves uh, from Trump. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. You are referring to the most pre popular president in history by way to vote. Um, the only presidential candidate who scored more votes than tr than Trump was Joe Biden. And of course, as you know, I, um, I think those the figures of who voted for Joe Biden should be suspicious. Now, by the debacle, you're referring to the Capitol Hill riot, which I covered on the Alt Tech exclusive. Uh, I go into detail about what happened there. Um, the idea that you would actually bring out the 25th Amendment because of a bunch of boomers waving flags um, and just basically mucking about in the chambers. I mean, that's all they were doing. Um, <coughs> really, literally, this is manufactured outrage, what happened. The same way that, uh, that um, there was manufactured acceptance of the Black Lives Matter um, real riots, doing real damage and real destruction, there was manufactured outrage of these people who were just larking about and filming themselves, taking selfies and live streams in the halls of Congress. And it was all set up. I mean, it's pretty obvious that they, 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 there's even some videos, there's even some photos that look very much like pack shots where they're all lined up and there's a photographer saying, say cheese and things like that. Um, it's none of those people, I mean, with the exception, I mean, there was a guy who was hit on the head with a fire extinguisher, a policeman, he's dead. <clears throat> I think if that story's true, obviously that is murder. There's also the, the killing of Ashley Babbitt, shot dead by a, a security guard which the left are currently celebrating. They say, oh, kill a Nazi, it's brilliant. Um, if you take those things out of the equation, those two tragedies, no one committed anything that worse than, I would say, aggravated trespass. I know, well, I know one of them stole Nancy, Nancy Pelosi's laptop, and God knows what's on there. Hopefully not a sex tape. <coughs> um, but 
really theft, aggravated trespass. That's the worst that they had. And some of them, some of them are facing thirty years in jail. Like the Q shaman, he's just been he's just been told he could. He, the, the the prosecution are pushing for twenty eight years. I mean, what did he do? He just wandered around with his horns, like looking like an idiot for a while. I mean, it's, and he's quite funny. I, I I heard an interview with him on Alex Jones, and honestly, he's crazier than I am. I quite warm to him. <clears throat> As for the GOP, now. You don't really. You, I don't think you understand what's going on here. I mean, the the rank and file of the Republican Party love Trump. The management of the of the party, the senior figures, they're split. A lot of them are kind of never Trumpers and neocons. Others are pro Trump. I mean, the Republicans. You know, what are they are they really going to abandon their most pre popular figure in history? Do you think if they by abandoning him, they're going to be more successful? Really? Steve, you, you have a completely inverted view or point of reality. And the idea of the 25th Amendment is totally unjust. I think they should. I think the 25th Amendment needs to be applied to Joe Biden and his administration, his illegal, his illegal administration, which has essentially usurped its way into the White House. Um, that's where the 25th Amendment needs to be applied. <coughs> and uh, you've got uh, and you've got people saying, "Oh yeah, well you know, I've, de I've debunked Mick West when he's been talking about the Go Fast UFO." I say, "Well, okay." Said the same thing to Ben. All right, you reckon you've debunked Mick West? Tell us exactly what's wrong with his mathematical analysis of the Go Fast UFO. Because Mick West is using the numbers from the screen of the aircraft. All the data he's using is from the head-up display on the aircraft that's that, that's got the uh, the Go Fast UFO in its sights. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. Well, Charles Scott, who regularly comments on my channel. He's done that. Charles Scott has put together a mathematical formula which which challenges the one put forward by Mick West. And there's long before I heard about this from Charles, I was looking at Mick's West videos and I had a lot of other problems with them. I'm actually uh, writing an article for UFO Truth magazine which is going to cover this in detail. Um, so if you get a copy of that, you'll be able to see you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see what I mean. Definitely you'll be able to see what I mean by that. And of course the story doesn't match what the pilot says. You know, the pilot says it was doing these really crazy maneuvers that the fighter plane could not could not match. Yet what we see on the video is that there is a very firm block on the target for the whole length of the video. And it appears to be going in a, in a straight line or in a very gentle turn. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Oh, which videos are you talking about, Steve? Because there are three, there are three clips which were released by, um, by TTSA, later confirmed to be part of ATIP. And, um, but, you know, what, what's, what do you mean? You, which vid you, you, look, you, you have three published clips, which are quite short, which in no way cover everything that was filmed that day by the aircraft or indeed everything that was witnessed by the, that was witnessed by the pilots. You can't possibly look at those three clips and say, oh, look, the pilots describe something different to what we're seeing here. They're describing things that were not filmed or were, were filmed that the film has not been released. The same goes for the telemetry, the telemetry from the ships, which backs up what the pilots were saying. Of course, they've not released the telemetry. They've not released the firing solutions and the radar logs and the other things. Uh, probably, probably because it's got nothing to do with the UFO context as such these days. It's probably simply because it will give away too much about the capabilities of those ships, which are very, very highly guarded secrets. So I think what you're trying to say is, oh, the pilots say one thing, but I'm seeing something else in these three clips. You can't say that. Those three clips are just a keyhole into what the, the witness testimony was into that day, what the witness testimony, what was involved with that witness testimony that day. I mean, you must understand not just that day. I mean, the kind of things you see in those films, the kind of things that are said by David Fravor and Chad Underwood and all the others, is has been repeated by people in the past. Other pilots have seen things like this. Other people, non-pilots, have seen things like this and reported them. I mean, it goes back to the, the ghost rockets of Sweden in, like, about 1930. You must understand this. this is a perennial phenomenon that, is, that keeps coming up again and again and again. And now finally we have confirmed documentary and we have confirmed visual evidence of it which is recorded. This is the first time ever that recorded visual evidence has been released. So um, 
just to say, well, these clips don't tell me anything. These clips... Let me do Steve's voice. These clips don't tell me anything. It's absolute rubbish and whatever else you said. It is completely premature. <laughs> oh, I think Big West said it's pretty much... Um, it's being blown along by the wind at about 40 kilometres an hour. <laughs> Which is, of course, far more likely than someone travelling the huge interstellar distances uh, to get here. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Well, I don't know, Steve. You're essentially now using Occam's razor, which is more likely this well, this hypothesis or that hypothesis. Again, you, when you're dealing with unknown, unknown phenomena, you can't assign them into a hierarchy of likelihoods. I don't know where, what, where in the hierarchy of likelihoods you would put something we don't yet understand and next to something we do understand. Um, as I say, Occam's razor only works for systems that are known, where statistics, statistics have already worked out a, a very various likelihoods, which we can then assign into a hierarchy of probability. So um, it's a pretty meaningless statement you just made. So, uh, yeah, so I had a, I had a look at that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so there's, there's, there's not going to be any disclosure. And I, uh, I was going to do a video about uh, just using a little clip from one of Ben's videos where he's talking to Steve Bassett when they're bagging SETI. Because, you know, SETI's heard this fairly interesting signal from Proxima B uh, recently. And um, <clears throat> on a spot frequency of 982.002 megahertz. And uh, there could be something interesting from that. I mean, the technology is technology is improving all the time. Personally, I think we're going to get confirmation that we're not alone in the galaxy <laughs> or the universe. I don't know which would come first. More likely to be the galaxy simply because of the distances involved. Um, confirmation of that will come from SETI. It's not going to come from any American president or Russian president or anybody else. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Now, yeah, the, the whole thing to do with SETI. Now, I did, I discussed SETI with Steve, and Steve, of course, has a low opinion of SETI. He believes that it's a disinformation exercise. And you know what? I mean, if you watch watch my SETI video, and, well, I do agree with Steve, actually. It is designed to essentially um, keep people's attention away from UFOs. Once the UFO phenomenon emerged, it was a way of reducing interest in the UFOs. However, in my SETI video, I put forward something. I have a slightly different view to Steve. I think you're right. I think SETI eventually is going to work. Do remember that nothing can be covered up. Whatever they, if there's something out there, they're going to detect it, and it can't be covered up. A lot of people say yes, but the government will tell the, the astronomers not to tell anyone. What all of them? All the all the millions of astronomers in the world who share data on the in the internet in real time? No, astronomy is the one truly democratic science. We can't cover anything up with astronomy. All the data is above our head. It's all shared openly. You you couldn't you couldn't cover that up any more than you could herd cats. It's very different for the, the information stream. Of course, for UFO crash retrieval, is the exact opposite. It's a small area. Only a few people see it. It's you control the flow of information. You can cover it up. Um, so I. I think you're right. At some point, someone's going to mention that there's aliens out there. The Proxima signal is very interesting indeed. This is clever because it's actually on the... This is very, very clever they've done this, and it's very significant because Proxima B is the closest star to the Earth. Uh, in one of your videos, you call it a stellar nova. It's not a stellar nova, actually. It might become one one day. A stellar nova is when a star reaches the end of its life and explodes with enormous force, and um, it's, it lights up the whole, un whole universe for miles around. Um, it's not a stellar nova, it's a star. And um, it's possible that, yeah, there's going to be some result. But as I say in my video, it could backfire. The cover-up that Steve talks about, which I agree with, could backfire because it could have a positive knock-on effect on with ufology. I still personally believe, I think SETI is going to find something very, 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 very soon, I think, with the amount of effort being put into it by Yuri, Yuri Milner and people like that. However, I think... A, a disclosure of UFOs is more likely. I think I think the disclosure that the moment that Steve talks about the ending of the truth embargo is more likely. It's going to come first, I do think. Just even though the Proxima thing is very interesting indeed. So I'm sort of partly with you on that, but I still think 
Now, we're going to see a presidential disclosure at some point. No one's got a flying saucer in a shed. It's absolute bloody nonsense. I mean, you do see from time to time <coughs> that our memos are supposedly from military people saying we've got to get hold of one of these things, you know, because of the, uh, the manoeuvres that they can reportedly do and uh, radar invisibility and all this. And you can understand that because if, they, if they're told that they're by pilots or whoever that people are seeing these things and are doing all these great manoeuvres, they're going to think, well, you know, if it is real um, and we could get hold of one, then perhaps we could duplicate it. Makes sense. So, you know, there's, no, there's nothing to read into those sort of memos. It's just, a, it's just, it's just sort of common sense if you're in a... Uh, if, you, if you're in the military and it's um, and you're in, in, in intelligence or aerospace intelligence or whatever, it makes very good sense to try and find out what these what these things are. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. But why should we why should we put this effort in, Steve? If all they are are what is it seagulls, things like that. You see, it's and it's all a steaming pile and all that sort of thing, um, because. They, this has always happened. They laugh at it. They officially ridicule and deny it. And you join in with that, and they spend millions and millions of pounds researching it. Now it's, it's true. I mean, if the only the only time what you just said would apply is if there is a real phenomenon. It doesn't have to be aliens, but there is something going on there. There are there are some kind of objects which are of intelligent control, which are not human. Wherever they come from, whatever they are, they exist. The only thing that would make sense would be if they do, which what you just said would make sense, is if they do exist. Now, I'm getting slightly ahead of myself, but I'm, you know, my next UFO disclosure video is going to include this strange article that appeared in the Daily Mail. It's actually talking about British Special Forces and about how they were being, being trained to use non-lethal weapons against aliens and how that's sort of been reported a couple of times now by people like Tony Dodd and the Rich Planet. Richard D. Hall did a, a follow-up to that on Tony Dodd's mate who said he was in Special Forces. Um, this article in the, in the Daily Mail did say that the intelligence chiefs during the Cold War were worried that the Russians were going to get hold of extraterrestrial technology. Um, there's no citation for this, but they did say that. I'm curious about. I'm very curious about how deep this goes. Really, really am. Supposedly, this. Uh Task Force, this, <laughs> this Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force is going to be releasing its first report in June, is it? So it'll be interesting to see what that says, although I wouldn't expect to see anything in there that you wouldn't see in something like Project Blue Book. You know, it's going to be a misidentified aircraft, the usual sort of stuff. Now, 30,000 million 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 stars. We we don't know that yet, Steve. We don't know what's going to happen. This is this is unknown territory from us. This hasn't happened before. And you say it'll be just be Project Blue Book. No, it won't. <clears throat> Project Blue Book didn't release six months. Every six months released a public report. Of course, the UAPTF is still going to handle classified material. And the people like um, Bryce Zabel, who's saying things like, um, oh, uh, yeah, six months, we'll have disclosure, things like that. I wouldn't jump that gun. But... There's going to be something released, a public report. It may simply just be man on canic chase walking his dog, sees light in sky. But it's probably going to be more than that. And what's more, the very fact that they are releasing public reports is an uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a pole shift. It's a seismic transformation of how UFOs are portrayed by the state, which inevitably changes the relationship in this kind of like uh, infernal triangle between ourselves, the state, and the UFO phenomenon itself. That is significant. So I think we should just keep keep our mouths shut and our ears open and our mind working until June. Be, sh be assured, Steve, both of us will be commenting on that in six months' time. Oh, well, uh, five months, uh, five months' time now. Um, oh yeah, there is uh, one other thing. I wonder if um, the change of regime in America, I wonder if it's going to affect the Artemis Project. That's the only the only thing that I was uh, a little bit concerned about is Joe Biden going to put the pull the plug on putting the first woman on the moon. It'd be disappointing if he does. 
30,000 million, million, million stars. <laughs> it's funny that Joe Biden, now the wokists are no, no, no longer useful. He's sort of like uh, turning away from them a bit and giving them the cold shoulder and they don't like it. And this includes the feminists. So um, the very fact that putting women on the moon and things like that is, is not, it's not going to... I don't think that's actually going to be a, very much of a factor in this. As far as uh, Joe Biden pulling the plug, I can't see at the advanced planning stage that Project Artemis is, I can't see him cancelling it now. I, I don't really... To be honest, I don't really think that the... the cha well, firstly, I don't believe that Joe Biden's going to be president for very long. I think there is going to be some kind of pushback by Trump and by, uh, by the, um, the good guys, the white hats... However, should that not happen, I don't think it's going to really make a lot of difference. Whether Project Artemis actually gets them, pe gets people to the moon, are men or women, again, that's something I'm sure you're going to have an awful lot to say about, and so will I, when the time comes. But, you know, um, whether it has any bearing on the Apollo missions or not, well, we will see. We'll, we'll, I think we'll have to say that more at the time, but I honestly don't think this is going to change much. I don't think the change of presidency is going to affect the Artemis project very much from what we've seen of other space missions. Things such as the Apollo missions, actually, um, they they covered the Kennedy administration, Johnson, Nixon. You know, it's different parties, different presidents. They went ahead. This will probably be the same, should it happen, or whether they'll find some excuse to cancel it. Who knows? Uh, but I think the general safety and security of the of the planet is uh, is going to be uh, is going to be better with uh, Joe Biden at the helm. Thirty thousand million 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 stars. What? The security and safety of the planet is better off with Joe Biden than Donald Trump. Donald Trump, a, a president, a U.S. president, who by by the standards of American presidents over the last century is vir virtually a pacifist and an isolationist. The first U.S. president, probably since long before World War One, who actually has advocated the conditions of the Kellogg-Briand Pact. In other words, you know, we if we're not attacked, we don't attack. The first U.S. president who's actually done everything he can to introduce peace in the Middle East, to withdraw the troops, withdrawing the troops from Afghanistan, not starting another war, not inflaming the situation by funding rebels and pulling out the pulling out the CIA support for the Al Nusra Front in Syria. You actually believe that taking this man away will make the world safer, and instead we put in <coughs> um, Hillary Clinton's granddad, essentially, the globalist neocon it, career politician with fifty-five years in office. A guy who's already, on the very, very day he was inaugurated, a mysterious bomb exploded in Baghdad after a long, long period since ISIS was crushed of that not happening. Are you, you really, how can you possibly say that? How can you possibly not just be d detached from reality, but see what, to see that reality twist, turn completely on its head? That, Steve, that is insane what you just said. It's, it's outrageous. I really don't understand how you could believe that. I think Trump Trump had to be talked out of nuking someone. Didn't he? We got the nukes, why can't we do it? And they said, well, Mr. President, you, know, you can't really. <laughs> 30,000 million, million, million stars. Trump had to be talked out of nuking somebody. What can I say, Steve? A citation effing needed. I've, I've just, that's news to me. First time I've ever heard about that. I mean, it's, Joe Biden is the is the guy who might he might press the button in some kind of seizure. Well, no, nah, it's an exaggeration. I know it needs he needs authorization to do that. But you know, you with with him, he's going to start antagonizing Iran. He's going to start trying to kick things off between Israel and Iran. Oh goodness me, Steve, you really are unbelievable. Surely you don't believe this? What you're saying, do you? <laughs> Anybody pay for a drink disinfectant <laughs> to kill COVID? <laughs> 30,000 million, million, million stars. Uh, hydrochloroquine is not disinfectant. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, that's the end. That's st the rest. Steve just rambles on for a bit longer, talking about nothing important. Anyway, those two videos are very interesting indeed. Um, I'm glad I've had a chance to do a reply video to him now, and um, no doubt he'll encourage me to put 
photons onto celluloid again. I know not all of you like my reply videos to see to Steve, but I think they're necessary. He these debates actually are enlightening for people. Obviously, I think I'm winning these debates. He'll say otherwise, but um, you know, and someone might come across his channel and believe him. And just think he's talking sense and it's nice actually that there is another channel addressing his points which the viewer the new viewer who um, first appears will be able to find have reference to not least because steve himself um <laughs> steve himself refers to me as i do to him so um yeah um but by all means look at both sides of the story check what check out what steve has to say check out his channel um is there's a link in the description box to the videos I'm talking about, so uh, you can make your own mind up, as the saying goes. But in the meantime, there's more videos coming soon. Thank you for watching Hapanwo TV. Hospital Port as pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order.